look a bit more uh, with a, a nice dress and things now, but uh, done. Um, and the horse and coach. Now, if you have the horse and coach, and just to left that, you'll see the courthouse. And that just there, and, and um, that's how we used to go. Well, that, that used to be run every day from Hertford, from here to New Plymouth. That, that's 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 the post office, and that was the exchange. That was a telephone exchange. It still is, it's, but it's an automatic exchange now. And uh, I don't what those other things are. Don't ask me. But um, that used to be fully staffed. We had a complete staff on that. Uh, as it is. Um, it's had a few things. I remember when, when, when we had a, that. What was that tornado we had country of one? We spoke to speed off. But the roof started to lift. Oh, the whole thing when they had that. Um, that tornado we had? Oh, the bowler. Bowler, it's on that bowler, yeah. It started to take the roof off. All these fire guys were sitting up top trying to hold it down. And, um, it's yeah. Just, it, yeah, it's. Um, it's not a hotel, but it's, there's a bit of history about it in books somewhere, too. And Brian and I reckon we could do. We could, yeah, that's a fair bit of history in this, in this place, really. So, it's one of, uh, we were supposed to be the port of Taranaki apart from Waitra. Oh, the, I mean, the early 1900s. 1900s, about 19, from about just after the, after the First World War on, 20, about 26, something like that, you know. I know, um, don't you laugh at me, but I also worked for the timber up here, a guy by the name of Harry Clemens had a timber, and it was, it was a proper timber, we had our own logs, our own, did the works. Um, and we got the contract to remove all that stuff, plus the old wagons and things to pull the whole wharf and everything to pieces down there. So there was a lot of iron on there that probably went over to Japan, sold a scrap and got chucked back as this, you know. A lot of the piles and stuff yeah. went up to that, um, that Waiiti up north of New Plymouth, north of there? Yeah. All in that um, Castle Wilkinson Castle. Castle, Wilkinson Castle. Castle yeah. there. A lot yeah. of that timber from here. Yeah, yeah. Because it was, it was, uh, what was it? Was, was it all hardwood? It was like Yarra, Australian Yarra, and it was all good hardwood, you know. It's been up here a while, I don't know if it's not there for the next couple of months. And the. Um, oh, that'd be. Uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Tell me, how many, how many places have you actually worked for over there? Oh, heck. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was just a part of mine. I used to get British writing hand out there. There used to be a great shop there, I worked there. Drapers used to be there, I worked there. Ford Gage was here, I worked there. Um, Don Lay was a great shop down there where the op shop is, so I used to work there. And then Yep Warren Yep if you're on the corner, I worked there. Um, then on top of that, I used to work for Billy Lind at the Pihama store. Push block out every morning, used to, used to take me quite a 20 minutes to get out there. Push block home every night. So. And now I was, I, was, I, I was part owner of a quarry up the back road, of course. And, uh, yeah, I've driven taxis at night, part time. and. Um, I drove a, a, had a bus run near Tahara for eight years, uh, six days a week, so, as well as, a, as doing a bus run near to Stratford as well. And I couldn't let the grass grow under my feet, eh? I had, I had, a, I had a pian pianist and, and yeah. a guitarist and I played the drums, so. Oh, wow. Three piece? Yeah, yeah, three piece, yeah. 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 Just all the old time dancers. Yeah? Yeah. 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 So where did, the, where did you play here? Oh, in, in the drill hall, which is in the next street back. Okay. And then we'd go, we'd, we'd, all the country dancers, the tours, Okato, I um, uh, used to go and play for Colin King at Waitra uh, occasionally, um, all around Mangaree, um, Eltham, Hara, just wherever they wanted us to go and play. It was old time dancing, just, you know, yeah, yeah. those days. So, you know, the days when people actually danced. Yes, you know? yeah, really danced. Yeah, yeah. 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 Then part of that, I was also conductor of the local brass band here. Um, I joined that one in about 1939. Yeah. yeah. Do they have a band retender here? Ah, uh, no. We've got a band room just down there. Well, it's been sold now. The Opening Plaza taken it over. But, but yeah, I became looked after my dad and knocked off, you know. And then bands went out of fashion not long after that. And um, yeah. I loaned the instruments to the high school on, on sort of permanent loan sort of style. And the high school got burned down, as you saw around the fire station. And the only one I got left is my own corners at home. So the only instruments I got left. So. C melody saxophone that was burnt and as well, which is a pity mm. because they didn't make them after 1952, I think, from some of that time told. So, mm. yeah, so, um. Brian, this was all Brian's idea, this, and it works because we were losing, we were losing a lot of water and we just go down. Where Brian's standing here, 
the bucket side there's a big tank there, and it's a filter tank, and the water goes around there. And that was all Brian. Brian did most of that. Most of this was his idea. He, he did it. He done a marvellous job, this guy. When did we build this, Brian? When did we build this? Build it. The whole, the, the, the covering. Well, it was, it was covered in in 1982, wasn't it? 82, something like that, yeah, 82. Yeah. What's on that? And I, and I was only a teenager when we when we first dug this thing because I, I lived across the road and it was all wheelbarrow and shovel work here with my father and you know the, all the guys around town. And this was all dug out by hand. Actually, it was it was a lot deeper than at the top end of what it is now because we had a party over there one night and and Dad was as full as I've ever seen him. Actually, he disappeared. It pitched my little blue trunks. We used to have a high diving board. And it was on a Thursday, and every Thursday they emptied the bars and cleaned them out. Dad had just left the diving board, and he said, "Thought, ow, bars are empty." And they, the one, the one Thursday they hadn't emptied the thing out, and he hit the water. When he got back home, he was as sober as a judge and as white as a sheep. Off the front, you see. Oh yeah, yeah level with all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Um, this is working all right now? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's all good. Dennis has come in this afternoon and finished those letters. Correction boys came up the other day, we gave it a good sweep out. And it's filling up now. We started filling Saturday morning. And how long will it take to fill? Take about a week. We're filling it with a garden hose only. Because that kind of saves the town water a lot, you know. You can't take too much away at once. So it'll take a week, and it'll take another week to heat up. Of the heater, you know, we've got solar system going now. So. Solar heating, and also got automatic coronation. That's still working right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my name is Dennis Latimer. I came, I came to Openaki in '97. Had a mobile home. We were travelling the country. We came here to do a little job, and um, uh, about uh, you know, ten years later, we're still here. That's right. And. Uh, we got encouraged, I'm a songwriter by trade, but we were encouraged to, do, to have a go at some murals. So we did some, um, some big stuff on the walls, and uh, it's, uh, it's created a lot of popularity for, for Openaki. People who come around the mountain uh, uh, bring their cameras with them, and, and um, as a result of Openaki, I've done uh, um, aquatic swimming centres in Auckland, um, quite a bit of work in Melbourne. And so uh, we're all famous in Open Aki. <laughs> and those murals create a lot of interest. So uh, it's part of the history of the town and it's uh, uh, becoming an attraction. And um, it's, it's worth a stop to have a look. It's good fun. So you've done, you would have said you've done most of the murals in Open Aki? Well, a lot of them are out of sight. So um, yeah, I guess if you add it up that way, yeah, that's, that's probably a fair comment. There's, there's been two or three other artists who've had, who've had done their share. So how many murals have you been responsible oh, no. for? You don't know. Don't know. Um, Just keep you going for the last... Uh, 20 week. odd, 20 odd, I suppose, uh, around the country. Um, there's not many of us, because the big scale stuff's not easy to do. There's an act to it. And had you done many before you came to Open Aki? Uh, I doubt whether I'd done any. But it was always on the cards. You, as a sign writer, you have, uh, you have that creative ability, which is, which is a god gift that you make, make use of, I guess. Um, and to be able to have the privilege of uh, attacking a wall and getting paid for it, uh, that, that's, that's great. And to do the big stuff, oh, it's a legacy. That's wonderful. I'm so lucky. And have you got many, is there any more plan for Open Aki? There are one or two. Um, finance is always a problem because a lot of it's community raised finance of course and they, they rely on sponsorship. Uh, Creative New Zealand gets involved uh, and, and other organisations so and of course um, TSB Trust, local, uh, they've been excellent and uh, without, without all this financial help that these kind of been done because they're not cheap. So it's, it's, it's a lost art and very important people because without signs you're nowhere. Yeah, so there. <laughs>